Hello there, people of the internet. So it's a scolding hot day here in Florida, and I decided to come out and get some sun, and Kevin decided to scream at the top of his lungs in the background. Uh, those who don't know who Kevin is, he's my peacock. I got four of them. They're all named Kevin. They're very noisy birds, and I guarantee that you guys are going to hear them very frequently today. I decided to come out and get some sun, and <laughs> upon doing so, I came out to the rifle range. And I have a whole plethora of different uh, rifles that I will be showing off here in the next uh, little while. Uh, this one is one that I own, but some of the rifles I'll be showing off are borrowed. Uh, this right here is one I just picked up recently. This is an 1898 model uh, Craig Jorgensen. I'm going to use the pronunciation Craig Jorgensen because that is what is most common in the country that I'm currently in. Uh, my Norwegian friend told me that the name is actually pronounced Krog and not Krag, although some people do pronounce it as Craig. So apparently I was told the correct pronunciation is Krog, but for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna call it the Krag because that is what most people in the United States and that I've ever known, uh, that is the way that most of them pronounce it. But in, I mean, it's the same way with uh, the M1 Garand. Uh, the military pronunciation was Garand, but John Garand's name, he himself said it was pronounced uh, Garand. So, tomato, tomato, same thing. Uh, if you want it pronounced one way, then you go ahead and you go for it. But for the most part, most people pronounce it Crag, so that is how I'm going to pronounce it. This is chambered in 3040 Crag, or 30 U.S. Army, I think that was the designation back whenever this was made. United States military designations for all of their stuff is not great. People say that the United or that the uh, British designations for all their military equipment is confusing. But have you ever taken a look at the United States designations? So this is 30 caliber U.S. Army. I think I think that's the designation for these right here. And let's just completely ignore the M1 system. Every single rifle is an M1 until it is no longer an M1, right? So, and <laughs> there, 30 caliber M1, which is the 30 out six, which is an updated version of the 30 out three. And there's a whole freaking plethora of news that I can go in with that. But today we're talking about the 3040 Krag. I'm just gonna use that designation because that is what is uh, modernly used for. I like this rifle. Uh, whenever I bought this rifle, I was, I mean, I got it at a pretty good deal. It's been sporterized. The main selling point for this rifle is the, uh, we got a set of uh, Redfield sights back here. And I can see with these Redfield sights with my bad eyesight way easier than I can with an actual set of sights for the Krag Jorgensen. This is the first Krag I've ever actually legitimately fired. I have handled them before and I've messed with them before, but this is the one that I've ever had the chance to go out and fire. And lo and behold, it is my rifle. And I can tell you from experience that I can see with these sights way better than I can with uh, actual military sights. So this was actually the selling point for me. Besides that, obviously it's been sporterized. It's still chambered in the original 3040 Krag. You will get some conversions with these rifles, but they're less common. Uh, these f are a capsule loading system and they uh, load from the side of the receiver as opposed to what most of us know nowadays where a rifle will load from the bottom like a Mauser style rifle will. What I find incredibly ironic with our Krag rifle here, thank you Kevin, I appreciate that buddy. Whenever the Krag was adopted by the United States government, the Mauser actually, like the Mauser action actually played a part in those trials as well, and it competed with this rifle. And for some unknown reason, this rifle right here won <laughs> over the uh, Mauser system. And it wasn't but a few years later where the United States ended up adopting the Mauser system and replacing this right here. I think that was a really good call. Now. I really like the Krag rifle. As a matter of fact, I personally like it more than the Mauser just because of how buttery smooth this thing is. And I'm still yet to find a Mauser that has the buttery smooth nature of the Krag right here. Not only that, but I actually really like the capsule system for loading these rounds. All you do is you open up uh, the loading port of the side of your receiver and you literally just take your rounds and you just freaking dump those bad boys right in there. <laughs> It's not very complex, and whenever you close it, the follower is on a spring that uh, automatically opens it uh, whenever you open the action, but whenever you close it, that follower pushes those rounds back up, and they 
load automatically into the receiver. It's a really unusual and confusing action, and I don't think I'd be able to ever disassemble the thing, but I'm certainly glad that I don't have to do that. <laughs> okay. The 3040 Krag reminds me a lot of the 3030 cartridge. It is a rimmed cartridge. It's obviously obsolete technology. These burn at roughly 40,000 PSI of pressure, which is not that much, especially in terms of smokeless powder, modern rifle cartridges. Uh, I could see why they would want to update this to the 30-06. Ultimately, uh, they went with the 30-03 and ended up going to the 30-06 ultimately. But I want to talk about the action of the Krag real quick. A buddy of mine described the action very accurately. I was always told that these were incredibly smooth actions and boy oh boy were they right. Anyone who's ever handled a crag knows just how unbelievably like how I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to tell you guys exactly how my buddy described it and it was spot on with accuracy. You know how like window pane glass is incredibly smooth uh, surfaces of glass. If you were to take two sections of window pane glass and lather them in butter and then rub them together face to face and then translate that resistance to a bolt action rifle that would be what <laughs> that would be what uh it would be like to run a crag and i was skeptical at first but holy crap this right is probably got to be the smoothest bolt action rifle i have ever ran in my entire life a lot of people are not fans of the side loading system just because it's different than what they know I mean, it's definitely different than what i know but i tell you what man just i was out here the other day actually and i was running some rounds through this thing just you know making sure it's zeroed in uh i was testing it for functionality things like that and having the ability to just kind of take your rounds and drop these bad boys into your magazine close that and go to town with it I think that's a pretty sweet system, and it will take a bit of practice to be able to do it effectively, but yeah, I still think it's a pretty sweet system. So uh, this right here actually does have a magazine cutoff system on it. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin, you are really noisy today, my goodness. This does have a magazine cutoff system on the side of the rifle. Back during the times that these rifles were being created and whatnot, uh, they were being used basically to replace single shot rifles and the united states government wanted their uh, soldiers their conscripts their whoever it is that they were using to be able to single load their rifle and hold their magazine for reserve in the event that they would end up needing their magazine so i actually have a couple of rounds inside of the magazine of the crag here and they actually will not load into the receiver because i've got the magazine cut off on so if i wanted to i could just take a single round and load it right in there and it'll load into the chamber and now this rifle is ready to fire so that being said i'm gonna go ahead and send a round down range the 3040 crag is not a particularly potent or powerful round so the recoil is not that bad but it's still quite a powerful round considering that not long before this they were using black powder cartridges i could understand why they would think that this right here is a pretty incredible round all right Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that, buddy. Just an absolutely buttery smooth action, especially whenever you're running brass case ammunition. I've ran plenty of steel case ammunition in my time. And uh, yeah, I'm telling you right now, brass case ammunition is definitely the way to go. All right, let's send another. All right, we have a failure to fire. I am an idiot because I had my magazine disconnect off. I'm not used to rifles like this. There we go, now we have one in the chamber. To where you have to pay attention as to whether or not your magazine is turned on. All right, now let's send one. All right, I think I'm nailing our target pretty well. We'll go ahead and we'll send one more and then we'll wander down there and see what our target looks like. The recoil on this, I was expecting more recoil, honestly. The crag with this sporterization is actually incredibly lightweight and uh, the cartridge seems like it would be pretty hefty, but I guess with the 40,000 PSI, which is not obtaining the velocities like a 30 out 6 would or something like that, this is definitely an old-timey cartridge, but for its time, it was revolutionary, you know? All right. Saving my crag brass here for reloading down the road. 
there is no system to lock the magazine open whenever you're out of ammunition, which makes sense because they wanted you to be able to single load this rifle. The safety is very similar to that of a Mauser just right here on the back of the bolt. Flip that over and that actually disconnects the sear and locks the bolt, makes it to where you can't operate the thing and the trigger, it will not go off while the uh, safety is engaged. So it does everything that a safety is supposed to do. All right, here's our target. We fired at it from about 100 yards away. Uh, not a bad grouping, all things considered. The first shot, I noticed I did pull it just a hair low. The second two were pretty much right where I was aiming at, so uh, the accuracy of this rifle definitely seems to be right where I want it to be. This is definitely not bad at all. You know, if I had enough ammunition, I could turn this into a little smiley face, but I don't think I'm accurate enough to be able to do that at the 100 yards that I'm at, so this is not bad. Uh, whenever I'd gotten this rifle, I was concerned about accuracy a lot of times with these extremely old rifles, just with how long uh, the corrosive ammunition has been a thing and a factor in uh, these old rifles. Uh, all it takes is one person not cleaning their rifle properly, and the rifle will be destroyed. And this rifle is, what, over a hundred years old? Like, the rifle has quite a bit of time and history on it, and all it takes is one guy to uh, mess up the accuracy of the rifle. I'm very happy to see that the accuracy of this rifle was not messed up. I'm also very happy to see that uh, I can actually see my sights whenever I'm putting rounds downrange on target. So whenever I had bought this rifle, I was not expecting to like it as much as I actually do, but by God, I actually really like this rifle. And I'm over here thinking to myself, yeah, I might be a Crag fanboy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not a fan of how difficult and expensive the ammunition is, but at least it is pretty easy and simple to reload. And since it burns at 40,000 PSI, it's not going to have the same uh, stretch. The brass isn't going to stretch as much as it would with something that runs at a much higher PSI. Like say 308 burning at about 62,000 or so PSI. So I might get a little bit more life out of these cartridges than I would out of uh, uh, something that burns at a hotter pressure. Let me turn my magazine on. I got two rounds left in this thing. Let's go ahead. Ah, oh, that freaking bolt action. Let's go ahead and run them down range. Why the hell not? I've always believed in not going home with shells in your pocket if you're taking a rifle to the gun range. Oh, Blamsky. Yeah, that one there looks like it was basically center shot. <laughs> All right. So the trigger on this thing is not the best. I will say that. Where the hell's my brass? Ah, there it is. Mini heart attack. I put it in the wrong pocket. The pocket was empty. I was like, oh God, where's my brass? <laughs> uh, the trigger on this thing is not great. It feels like a two-stage trigger. So you have this, you know, a little bit of travel and then you have a wall that you have to break through, but that wall is like three millimeters long and it's kind of on the spongy side. And I mean, I wasn't really expecting a great trigger with this thing to begin with, but the trigger is actually worse than I was expecting. I imagine I could probably get it down to being a better trigger, but eh, I think it's good enough. I think the smooth action really levels out the crappy trigger on this thing. Kablamski, that one there, I think I made that one go a little bit low, but I'm going to uh, attribute that to our trigger. All right, well, ooh, that's nice and warm. That actually feels good on my hands. <laughs> When in doubt, warm yourself up with your rifle, then you won't notice that it's 105 degrees outside in a humid environment like here in Florida. Let's wander down there, take a look at the steel. I want to see where that second shot went. First shot, I think I had pretty much spot on from where I was aiming. But that second shot, I felt, just with that trigger squeeze, I felt me tug that rifle just a little bit. So let's wander down there and have a look. Okay, here's our target. And, yep, exactly as I th said I thought I did. First shot, center mass, pretty much right exactly where I was aiming. Second shot, I felt myself pull that trigger just a little bit, and we hit a little bit low. Oh, well, these things happen. <laughs> I still made my shot on target, so hey, it still was a hit. So this right here is a rifle that the United States adopted in hopes of adopting some sort of uh, repeating action rifle. A lot of your, well, they were repeating rifles of the day, but a lot of them were, A, they were black powder, B, they had like uh, tube fed magazines inside of them, so you couldn't have any kind of spitzer bullet inside of them. They were looking for some sort of system to where they didn't have bullets stacked on top of one another, uh, so they could um, have multiple rounds inside of a magazine for the use of a repeating rifle. 
but have pointed bullets. If you have something with, say, a tube-fed magazine, and you have the pointed bullet of the bullet behind uh, one projectile pressed against the uh, primer in front of it, then you definitely risk detonation on that uh, round in front of that one whenever the firearm recoils. But if you have a system like this where the uh, rounds are not uh, pressed up on one another, you know, nose to primer, tip to butt, then you will have uh, basically zero chance of any kind of detonation inside of the uh, magazine because there's no way for them to really detonate. Not unless you have like a rock or a screw or something, some kind of uh, malfunction with the rifle to where you have something pressed up against uh, the primers in the magazine. But let's be honest, infantrymen couldn't even screw that up, right? What I find absolutely hilarious is the fact that the Mauser competed uh, with the trials that this rifle won in, and then the United States was like, yeah, you know what, this may be not the best system we could have chosen, and they ended up choosing the Mauser. They saw the superiority behind it. Uh, just the box magazine spring-fed, and there was a lot of controversy that came with the acceptance of that Mauser. But very quickly, uh, the acceptance of that Mauser, uh, which became the 1903, it very quickly became... Uh, known just how good of an action it actually is whenever it was stuck into actual service. The United States also eventually ended up creating the 30 odd 6 round, which was an incredibly potent round, uh, 30 caliber round, it's a rimless cartridge, uh, it just lends itself better to uh, self-loading firearms, and later on whenever firearms would start to be, you know, automatic as opposed to a bolt-action system like what the United States was working on, uh, having a rimless cartridge definitely uh, is a big perk in comparison to having a rimmed cartridge. It just makes it a lot easier to function. I mean, there are uh, self-loading firearms that operate with rimmed cartridges, but it just requires a more complicated system than something with a rimless cartridge. So this was a short-lived rifle, and it. I want to point out that the magazine is actually about half the capacity, half the size of its original design. Originally, it was designed to, like, loop completely around the receiver, and it would have held, like, 10 rounds or something like that. Uh, whenever the rifle was actually being designed. Of course, the rifle design was actually designed around the magazine. The magazine was created first by the uh, gentleman that actually went around to making the system. The magazine was created first, and they decided to build a rifle based around the magazine, and this right here is what we ultimately have. Now, this is the United States versions of, version of it. Uh, there's slight variations in other countries' versions of the Krog Jorgensen, Krag Jorgensen, Craig Jorgensen, however it is that you want to pronounce it. Uh, the United States, the magazine on it opens sideways on like the Danish model. I think those open like forward. Uh, there's a couple of a couple of variations, but the same uh, mechanical fundamentals apply with each of the rifles. To take the bolt out, the extractor right here, you got to like do this thing to where you pick it up and turn it sideways and then you can turn the bolt and pull it out and I don't have any reason to take the bolt out of this thing at least not right now so I'm gonna go ahead and not do that and save myself uh, all of the trouble of getting around to making that happen besides that not a lot of bells or whistles with this firearm uh, I really like the sights I like I said the sights were a big selling point for me and if it wasn't for the sights I probably would not have gotten this rifle obviously it's been sporterized but I don't much care about that. Uh, it still has enough original rifle left for me to be able to talk about, hey, this is what this is. This is the history behind it. This is why it exists. And I think I made some pretty cool content on it. So this was actually a really fun video to make. And I really do like the Craig Jorgensen rifle, Craig Jorgensen, Krog Jorgensen, however it is that you feel like pronouncing it. I always, I always, I always get yelled at for pronunciations. It's terrible, guys. My main worry with this rifle, absolutely, was the accuracy of it. I kind of figured it would function, but my main worry definitely was the accuracy. And I'm very happy to see that the accuracy on this rifle is not bad at all. So thanks for watching, folks. Uh, let me know what y'all's comments are down in the comment section below. I'm sure somebody has something to say about this. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. The description down below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go ahead and go check that out. I'm going to go hydrate because I'm getting quite dehydrated to the point to where I've stopped sweating. So I know I'm dehydrated because it's like 100 degrees out here. Well, maybe not quite. I think the high today is like 95 degrees Fahrenheit. But it's still quite warm out here and quite humid. So I'm going to go inside and hydrate, relax, and grab another rifle because I've got a bunch of rifles to make videos on today. 
I mean, I've only got one day to do it, so yeah. I've got my brass, I've got my 1898, and I'm gonna head that way and go handle business. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day. If you guys have any experience with any of these uh, Krag rifles, then by all means, let me know down below. And if you have anything to teach me about them, I am all ears. I plan to make follow-up videos for this right here because, well, I really like it <laughs> and I enjoy shooting it. And I have several video ideas that I can use this rifle for. Up next, I need like a rolling block or something. <laughs> I need a rolling block and a trap door and then my U.S arsenal will basically be complete all right you guys go off have yourself a fantastic day i'm gonna go hydrate bye guys I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garen. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.